financial documents. This video is going to look at some of the key financial documents that a business may have. So the key financial documents that you may see in business are a purchase order, a delivery note, a goods received note, an invoice, a receipt, a credit note and a statement of account. Now in this video we're going to look into more detail at each of these financial documents, what they are and what the purpose of them is. So let's start with a purchase order. So a purchase order is sent from the buyer to the seller and effectively the purchase order is asking the question can we buy the following items from you? Of course what it will do is it will list the item they want to buy, the price that they want to pay from, normally from a catalogue for example or the website of the company and the amount of items or the quantity they want to purchase. Now this is actually a legal document, effectively it's a contract saying we want to buy from you. So it's sent from the buyer to the seller telling them what you want to buy from them. The seller will then sort out the order and then along with the order they will send what's called delivery notes. So this is usually stuck to the top of the order, let's assume it's in a box for example, stuck to the top of the box, a delivery note. The delivery note is sent from the seller to the buyer and what it says is basically what you can find inside your order. So when you open up that box, what you should find. It will list the order details, it will tell you what you're going to find in the order and it may state anything that couldn't be put in the order. So for example, maybe some item that couldn't be delivered. It will tell them what item wasn't delivered or it might tell them the lesser amount of items included. For example, if you ordered 10 but they could only send 8, it would tell you that. Now this is normally used by the customers just to check that the order is correct. So what they said they sent actually has been delivered. And if not, it would be used to query the question. Then you tend to find that maybe the company or the so-called buyer writes to the seller telling them, we received your goods. So effectively just saying everything's been received, it's fantastic, everything's great. Or maybe they might point out some issues that you haven't delivered enough items or there was something missing. And if that was the case, then maybe the seller could then sort out a credit note or to send out the items that are missing if it is a mistake, maybe with the courier, for example. Now, a credit note is quite an interesting document because what a credit note is, is sent from the seller to the buyer and effectively is offering some discount or some money back for an issue that may have arised. So typically a credit note is issued if maybe, for example, the buyer has sent an item back to the seller and maybe that was because something was damaged or broken or it could be that maybe for example it's issued because they've paid for something but the actual seller couldn't deliver it so they give them a credit or a discount and it's all calculated based on the price of the item and obviously the number of items that couldn't be delivered. Now the credit note effectively is money coming back to the buyer that's all it is but it's only issued if the seller can't fulfill the exact details of the order or something has gone wrong with the order. Now, the way this works typically is it gets deducted from the end of the invoice or it could get added to your statement to your account. Two keywords we're going to look at now. So, invoice. Well, that's usually sent from the seller to the buyer. And typically it's sent perhaps 30 days usually after the buyer has received the goods. And it'll state what money's owed and needs paying. It'll say how much you've got to pay. It'll tell you when it needs to be paid. And usually it might tell you what method is required for payment. So it sets out all the information that needs to be included. The invoice is the actual amount to be paid. So that is basically what's been ordered and the expected, less any credit notes that have been provided and should be the figure then that you're going to pay in a business. Once you've made that payment, you should receive what's called a receipt. Now, a receipt is sent from the seller to the buyer, and it just confirms that payment's been made for the order. It also says to the buyer that you've got now some proof that you purchased those items. So if, it, for example, something was to go wrong, just like you can in a shop, you could present that receipt and say, that's my proof of purchase. That means that I purchased these items on that date, and as a result of that, I think that I'm due for a refund or I'm due for you to do some action and try and put right any mistakes or wrongs that you maybe have with the product. 
it's a great document as well because in a business you can look back at receipts and you can see what items you purchased what price you paid and the date of when you made any such purchase and lastly we have something called the statement of account now the statement of account is effectively a record that shows from the seller to the buyer how much trade has gone between the two organizations so it's a summary of every transaction that's been done with that company by the customer it also will state any outstanding debits or credits so maybe the account is in credit for example or it might show that they owe some money for an invoice they haven't quite paid at the moment it can be a useful document because it provides information about the transactions that have taken place between the two organizations over the year and it can be used for a record for example to see how the business is performing or for example if you want to make another order in the future you could suggest that you can look at how prices maybe have changed so that's a statement of account let's take a look at how these flow between the two in a visual diagram let's take a look at an example of the typical flow of how these documents would work so the buyer would first draw up a purchase order they'd tell the organization they want to purchase from what items they want what the description of those items are how many of the items they want and the price that they think they're going to pay they send it over to the seller the seller would then upset that contract they would start to prepare the order they'd pack it they put it into the boxes and they'd draw up what's called a delivery note they'd attach that delivery note to the order and then they'd send it with the order back to the buyer the buyer would then use that delivery note they would check off to ensure that the order is correct and all the items they expect to be delivered have been and then they'd write back and send a goods received note which would just confirm that all the items they expected have been present once the seller has got that information they would then draw up the invoice now the invoice is a request for payment so it's saying we want to receive payment by you by this date and of this amount of money and they send that invoice to the buyer typically nowadays that would be sent by email it used to be posted out but it's normally done electronically and that's the first part of the flow of the documents now let's look what happens after the invoice has been received so let's assume that the invoice is now being paid by the buyer the seller will then send a receipt to the buyer the receipt will state how much was paid and it will give the details of what was actually purchased now maybe in a few months time the buyer finds that there's an issue with one of the items they purchased from the seller they contact them and point this out and the seller decides that actually we can't swap the item we're going to have to give you a refund so given a refund they will send something called a credit note now the credit note is sent from the seller to the buyer which will be equivalent to the amount of money paid for the item that's being returned the credit note could be telling the buyer they're entitled to a refund which will be transferred to their bank account in the form of cash by a certain date or more likely it will say that we owe you this amount of money and next time you order from us we will deduct this amount of money from your next order so when they produce the next invoice they will deduct whatever the credit amount is now how will they find that out well it's kept on what's called the statement of account the statement of account will show the debits and credits which are between the buyer and the seller so ideally this figure should always be zero that suggests then that any outstanding payments are being made and there's no credit but if for example it was a negative figure that would actually mean that the buyer currently owes the seller money maybe they haven't paid an invoice if that figure was positive for example then that would suggest that there's an outstanding credit note which the buyer is entitled to when they do their next order and that is the example of how the documents flow between the buyer and the seller so that is the key financial documents that have been covered and hopefully explained you now should understand what is meant by the term purchase order delivery note goods received note invoice receipt
credit note and statement of account. If you don't fully understand them, watch the video back and see if you can get some notes from the slides to help assist you. Don't forget to follow me on my social media platforms. And remember, until next time, keep buzzing.